Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our very first episode of um, Ohio's Wild and Scenic Rivers. Um, I'm Alyssa Yapel. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, and I'm here with Heather, who I'm going to pass this off to in a second. But before I do, I just want to let you know that today's topic is about uh, the role of a river. And so Heather's going to talk about um, Ohio's uh, scenic River Program, which is the oldest in the nation, and um, what makes the scenic, scenic, what makes a river scenic? Excuse me. Um, and the next Wednesday and the other, the rest of the Wednesdays throughout the month of August, we're going to be continuing our She's a Force of Nature webinar series Wednesdays at 10, and that is highlighting women throughout DNR um, and the many different careers that they hold in the natural resource industry. Um, so with that being said, I will pass it off to Heather. All right, good morning. So uh, as Alyssa said, thank you. I'm Heather Doherty. I'm the manager of the Ohio Scenic River Program. We are in the Division of Natural Areas and Preserves. And thanks for joining us. Um, we're gonna, t I, as Alyssa said, we're gonna talk today about what makes a river scenic and how communities are involved in making their rivers officially a scenic river. Um, and in general, um, how communities are involved in protecting rivers um, and why they're important to all of us. So um, we are gonna be doing webinars. Uh, Alyssa just said there's, she's a force of nature is gonna continue on Wednesdays. We're gonna continue our scenic river webinar series on Thursdays in August. So today's kind of an introduction to what a scenic river is. Uh, next week, we're going to uh, talk about exploring for, uh, for bugs in rivers, so some tips on creaking and what you can find and what those uh, what you find might tell you about the health of your river. And then we're going to have it. Uh, the subsequent Thursday, we're going to talk about bug superpowers and what their survival tactics are for living underwater. Um, and then the last one, we're going to talk about um, the importance of the land next to rivers and why it's really important that those be in a natural state. So this is the first of four, a four part series. So, all right, so today we're gonna to talk about um, what a scenic river is. So uh, scenic is a special designation um, that was created when the Ohio Scenic River Law was passed in 1968. So. Why, why was the program created um, in 1968? What motivated people to do that? Um, well, at the time, there was a lot of environmental problems that were really coming to the forefront. So um, in 1968, a lot of our modern laws that, that governed pollution didn't exist yet. Um, and so pollution in rivers was a big deal. Um, and Many rivers in the Midwest actually caught on fire um, because of pollution. The Cuyahoga River is a, a well-known uh, example of that, but actually several rivers in the Midwest caught on fire. So I think that especially motivated people in Ohio to say, we want our rivers back. Um, and so legislators created the Ohio Scenic River Program. Um, in, in 68, the federal government followed uh, and created a, a national scenic river program a few months later. So, and the goal of the program and our mission is to protect Ohio's best remaining waters. And by best, we mean rivers with the cleanest water, with the widest abundance of wildlife that are in the most their most natural state. So, we have now have 15 scenic rivers in Ohio, um, and I'm going to start. I'm going to sh um, share my screen. And I'm going to show you some slides so you can see where those where those rivers are. So, wait, I'm not sure if I'm I'm not sharing my screen. Hold on one hold on one moment. Uh, all right. Okay, we're working on it. <laughs> uh, the 
this is how right. we had it right before the show and then you know when it starts <laughs> here it is do you see there it? it is okay great so this is um Perfect. this picture here is the little miami state scenic rivers one of our scenic rivers it's also a national scenic river um so here are the 15 scenic rivers in ohio so I manage the central Ohio region. So the rivers in the middle, Olentangy, Big and Little Darby, Kokosin and Mohican are rivers that I work on. But then we have staff in the other corners of the state working on those other rivers. Um, you'll notice that some of them are green. Those are wild and scenic. So they have a greater extent of areas without any kind of man-made um, intrusions into the river corridor and then the ones in lighter blue are recreational um, so they're still important in terms of recreation for people so this is 830 miles of river throughout the state but the our state has thousands and thousands of miles of river so this really is not very many um, 15 rivers is a, is a small number so what makes these rivers special? So, and what makes them scenic? Um, I think what's confusing to people is that scenic is an aesthetic term. It means that something's pretty. Um, and so people say to me, well, why isn't this river scenic? And why isn't that river scenic? Um, if you think of it in those terms, I think most rivers are scenic. That's why we're drawn to them. Rivers are popular places where cities were built. Um, but we're using that term in a different way. So it's a special designation and requires really three components for designation to happen. Um, the first one is local support. So uh, communities come to us and ask for their rivers to be designated. It's not something that we go and impose on communities. And really, community involvement and the protection of a river is the, the most important thing that could happen. It really, it really, the, the people who live in and around the river and in the watershed play the biggest role in protecting um, waters and keeping them healthy. The next thing we look for is excellent water quality. So what does that mean? When we say water quality, we're talking about how clean is the water? We look at the presence of, you know, um, pollutants. Um, we look at the types of wildlife that's there, and we're looking for a wide array of wildlife or biodiversity. And a lot of times our scenic rivers have rare and endangered threatened species in them. So the, the fish we're looking at right here is one of those. This is the Tippecanoe darter. It is state threatened. Uh, it's, I think it's numbers are growing. It's, there's a, there was a time when you were hard pressed to find very many of these darters and now there's tons of them in the Derby. Um, fun fact, this fish is 1.5 inches long as an adult. So it's shorter than my pinky. Um, darters don't get very big. This is, I think, the smallest one we have in Ohio. They live in shallow, fast moving parts of the river. They sit on the stream bottom and eat bugs. So they're specialized to live in that part of the river. So anyway, rare and threatened species, but just a wide diversity of species in uh, rivers is one of the things we're looking for when we're considering a scenic designation. All right, and the third thing we need are, we look to see if there's a lot of streamside forests. Um, so, why? Why is that important? So I'm going to let you think about that for a moment. Why? So if we're worried about rivers being healthy, why do we care about land next to the river? So to help you think about it, I have a few pictures. So here's a river and here's a river. Which one is healthier? And has more wildlife. So if you chose this one, I think you're probably correct. So the trees along this river, by the way, this is the Olentangy State Scenic River in Delaware County. Um, the trees are so important to the health of the water. So if you're 
up here in this parking lot over here you've got gas and other things dripping off those cars that's going to wash straight into this water um, if you have natural areas next to rivers um, you they can provide some filtration for all the pollution and help keep it out of there um, they also shade the river and make it cooler and higher in oxygen which our sensitive species need they fall into the river and they make habitat for fish that like to hide under and on them so um, you, you really cannot separate the health of a river from the forested land that's next to it and we call this special area the riparian zone this is the area where land meets water and our last webinar series of uh, the month last thursday in august we're going to talk more about this and the unique habitats and what you're going to find if you explore a riparian zone so okay so the rivers are those forests are so important that's kind of what goes into our three levels of designation of a scenic river. Scenic is kind of our basic. If you have 10 miles of unbroken river forest without a bridge crossing, you would qualify for a wild and scenic designation. This is the Little Beaver Creek State Wild and Scenic River. Um, it, it has that designation. As you can see in this picture, it's, it's pretty wild. There's not a lot of human um, activity that we can see in this photo. This is the Maumee State Scenic and Recreational River. So recreational is a designation for rivers that may not have quite meet all those other criteria, um, but provide still provide important recreational opportunities. And if you can see in this picture, when I first looked at it, I couldn't tell what was going on. Those are people lined up all the way across the river. They are fishing for walleye. So there's a big walleye run there. Obviously, this is an important resource for people. So, okay, so this is the process. There's local interests. So it starts with the community. Um, local governments write letters or resolutions of support. We do a study and look at um, the water quality and the wildlife. There's a public comment period, and then the river is designated. So if you have community support, you have lots of natural streamside forests, um, you have lots of a, a wide array of wildlife in your river. Is it scenic in that kind of pretty sense of the word? Absolutely. I think our rivers are gorgeous when it comes to that sense of the word. All right, so once a river is designated, then what? So this is the kind of work we do when a scenic a, a river is designated. Someone like me will work on protecting that forested land next to next to the river. So these are my kids playing at high banks metro park and again back to the community metro parks and lots of other partners um, help protect land along rivers too um, so it's definitely a community effort but we between um, easements and land we bought we protected 6,000 acres of land so far along scenic rivers in ohio um, we do a ton of education and monitoring of our rivers um, we review publicly funded projects, so bridge crossings. Um, we review those to help make sure that they have limited impact on our rivers. And then we do special projects like restoration projects. I'm working right now on a low head dam removal that's going to um, uh, help the Mohican River. So quickly on monitoring, we're gonna talk more about this next week. Um, but the people there on your screen with that net on the left are looking for stream bugs. They're kicking up the stream bottom and those bugs are going to get loose and float into that river. Um, this is the type of stuff we're looking for. These are stonefly larvae. So um, if you find these guys cannot live in polluted water. So if you find things that are sensitive to pollution, it means your water is pretty clean. So we work with hundreds of volunteers across the state every year to monitor our scenic rivers and they get to learn more about their river while they're doing that and that's a really important way that communities can be involved in their rivers scenic rivers or otherwise this is something that you can do on any river that's in your community so we're going to talk more about that next week but again i want to focus on the fact 
that community partnerships are so important in protecting rivers, scenic rivers or otherwise, whether it's organizing cleanups or working with teachers to do education. Um, uh, it's, it's, it really can't be done without the community. Okay, so that's what a scenic river is. Um, but the question is, who cares? Why do we care about healthy rivers? Um, scenic rivers or otherwise? Um, why are they important to us? And I think, um, for me, they're fun. So these are places that we want to go play. So the young woman on the top right here who's found herself a pedestal, that's my daughter having a great time in the Olentangy State Scenic River. We want people to be able to experience rivers like this. And there, there are rivers, unfortunately, where I would not go play in this way because the water isn't appealing or it's not very clean. So this is an experience that we want to preserve for Ohioans, where it's fishing, boating, finding wildlife, playing. Um, and I think a, a lot of uh, people have figured out that if you have this available in your community, it's a more desirable place to live. So this is something that's good for communities to have in terms of uh, um, attracting employees and businesses and residents. Having outdoor recreation is becoming more and more important, uh, especially true right now when a lot of um, our entertainment is not available to us. The outdoors has become even more important. So rivers are interesting. So these are all things that you can find in rivers in Ohio. That fish on the uh, is a rainbow darter. It's another one of our rainbows or another one of our darters sitting on the stream bottom. It's only a couple inches long. So they look like tropical fish. And who would have thought that we have these in Ohio? They're super cool. The, there's an amphibian there on the right. It's called a hellbender. It is um, gets up to two feet long. It lives in some of our scenic rivers and other places. It's very sensitive to pollution. It has photoreceptors. It can sense light with cells on its tail, which to me is just crazy. Uh, this thing never leaves the water. Um, on the left, those are not oysters. People find these on rivers and they say, is that an oyster? What is that? Nope, we have freshwater um, mussels in our rivers and the Darby Creek has 44 different recorded kinds of mussels. You hardly ever see them because they bury in the stream bottom. So they're they're hidden from you. Heather, um, Heather what's the uh, light on the tail help help it do? Does it help it sense when predators are around or? Uh, it's a, so the, these these guys are nocturnal um, and they live under big rock crevices. They're very specific about the type of habitat they need, which is part of why they're, I think they're on the threatened species list in Ohio, if not the endangered. Um, so they want to be tucked away under that rock. And I think it helps them, uh, what I've read is that it helps them be totally in the shadows. Um, they want to know if they can be seen. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah, thanks. Okay, okay, yes. So these are present um, in a number of uh, our scenic rivers um, and there's a there's a Ohio Hellbender partnership that's working to help um, repopulate this species. So they're, they're really cool. Um, and then on the bottom right, we have a damselfly, which is a small version of a dragonfly. They eat insects and their larvae live in our rivers when they're young. So anyway, rivers are interesting. They're also, even if you don't really care about that stuff that lives in the water, there's lots of things that live next to rivers that are really important. Bald eagles nest next to rivers because they are fish eaters. Um, that's their primary food. They'll, they'll, they'll eat lots of other things, but that's where you're going to find the most nests next to rivers and quarries. There's lots of birds that use the forest along rivers to migrate up and down to across our country. Um, there's river otter, there's mink. Um, so rivers are tied to the, the rest of the uh, wildlife in um, our state. 
numbers are also part of what makes us unique. So I know a lot of us have heard the term, the, the Midwest is flyover zone, right? People, people are not aware of the cool things that we have here to, to go experience. And so these are things that I think communities can really take pride in. Um, it's part of what makes our state and your communities um, unique and special. Um, on the bottom left, that big round rock is a concretion. And those are really cool geologic features um, that you can find up and down the Olentangy River that pop out of, sh of shell, out of the shale. Um, sometimes they're as big as cars. I don't know any other place in Ohio or the Midwest where that happens. So I think a lot of our rivers and the, the natural areas in our communities have these kinds of stories to tell um, that are um, interesting. Finally, some rivers, not all, are drinking water. And so I don't know what could be more important than having uh, water available to us. So, yep, something we definitely cannot take for, for granted. And then lastly, um, if we do the things to take care of our rivers, so things like this exist, um, we also help avoid, sorry, I went back. We help avoid this. So these are problems that can happen if we're not managing water well and taking care of our rivers. Um, and so these are issues with safety um, and they cost a lot of money for our communities to fix. So we're avoiding those issues if we, especially if we take care of those forested rivers um, and let the areas next to the rivers be natural, this is, we can avoid these issues. So this flood on the left is in my neighborhood. Um, and it's pretty unfortunate, it happens about once a year. Um, so this is something I think we wanna, we wanna avoid in our neighborhoods. So safety is important. All right, so that I went through that kind of quickly. Um, I wanted to plug again what we're doing next. Um, on August um, 13th, we're going to hunt for water bugs. So how do you go and find those cool creatures in rivers? And what do they mean? What do they tell us about the cleanliness of our water? And how can you be involved in the stewardship of your river? Um, August 20th, we're going to talk about those water bug superpowers. So how do they survive underwater? Um, there's all kinds of creatures that you wouldn't know about. And they, I think their techniques for survival are really fascinating. And then lastly, on August 27th, we are going to introduce you to the riparian zone. That's the where land meets water. Um, and why rivers need trees and exploring that habitat and what kind of life lives there. So. Awesome. So um, a couple of questions, Heather. So okay. your job seems pretty cool. How did you get to be able to do what you're doing? Is, in, is there something that in your past like made you realize that this is, you know, the area that you wanted to go into? So. That's a great question, and I, um, I, I'm, I'm really passionate about environmental education, and I think one of the things we've learned is that taking kids outside um, is, is part of what makes um, them interested in protecting um, the environment when they grow older. So I, I think I spent a lot of time playing in creeks when I was little. Um, and playing in water. And so I think if you ask anybody who works at DNR or most of us, there's a good chance that they had those kinds of opportunities as young people. Um, and that that makes a big difference. That really inspires people. But then I did, I did study biology in college. Uh, I didn't always know that rivers were what I would work on, but I think it just ended up uh, turning back that way. And I'm, I'm, um, I really love my job and I love that we get to do lots of different things. We get to do science, we get to do preservation of land, we get to work with people um, and do education. So it's a great, uh, it's a great mix of activities that I really enjoy. Oh, I can't, can't hear you, Alyssa. Oh, sorry, I do that at least once every webinar. <laughs> 
Um, do you have a favorite macroinvertebrate and what is it? Uh, you're just tossing me softballs. I appreciate that. <laughs> My favorite? Oh, it's probably the water penny. So, uh, you know, not everybody is into insects and I understand that. Um, our water bugs, the water penny though, I think is cute. It is um, a beetle larva, but it looks like a little suction cup and it suctions to the bottom of rocks um, and eats algae. Um, and if you flip it over though, it has little tiny legs on the inside. So it looks to me, it's like the corgi of the insect world. It has tiny, it has really little legs that it uses to, to move around on. But um, water pennies, we will talk more about that next week. Awesome. Well, thank you, Heather. Um, I have to agree when I was younger, I also played in creeks all the time, I actually. Um, Oh, Eugene asked, what's your favorite fish? But, well, I wasn't allowed to go over to my friend's house unless I took an extra pair of shoes and socks because I fell in every single time I went over, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Eugene asks, what's your favorite fish? Um, thanks, Eugene. I don't know, uh, I, if this is the Eugene, I think it is. Um, I don't know as many fish as you do, um, but maybe I might. I might, I might just go with the tip of canoe darter because when you pull them out of the river, they're bright orange and they're tiny and they're, they, they have kind of like black stripes. I'm from Cincinnati and they're kind of Cincinnati Bengals colors. They're orange and black. So, but Ooh. I really, I always <laughs> love the, 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 the little itty bitty creatures in this world are my favorites. <laughs> awesome. Well, Thank you, Heather, and thanks for everybody that joined us today. Um, we will see you next week when we talk about hunting for water bugs. I know a lot of people have been out creaking this summer. Um, actually, before we forget, Heather, do we have a challenge? Um, yeah, so if you're part of what I mentioned is that one of the reasons we care about rivers is because they're fun. So. Um, if you go out and have fun on a river, a scenic river or otherwise, you are welcome to, if you post it on social media, we're using the hashtag scenic creaking. So go out and explore a river and see what you can find um, and share it with us on that hashtag. And then we're also, um, whatever you find, I think, um, if you find any bugs, we'll be talking more about that next week so you can learn more about what those are. Um, and I think Alyssa also shared in the chat that we have a, um, a new scenic river kids activity book um, that talks a lot about those um, water bugs. Um, and there's lots of fun puzzles and games in there as well. So you can use that kind of as a guide to what you find. And then we also, she also posted um, a video in the chat about how to go out there and find those bugs. So those are both available to you. Okay, you were almost off the hook and we got two more questions. So okay. <laughs> are invasive species a big problem in Ohio's scenic rivers? And then the second question is, what kind of opportunities are available for people who want to volunteer? Uh, so yes, invasive species are a big problem. Um, and those are uh, plants or animals that get introduced from some other ecosystem that are not originally from here. Um, and the problem is that they often out, they out compete and take over um, native habitats and so are species that are from here um, can't grow. Um, they are an issue on um, scenic rivers because uh, we do have a couple invasive species that really like to grow um, in the woods next to the river. And we talked about how forests next to rivers are so important and those big tall trees hold the riverbank in place with their, um, with their roots. But some of our invasive species like uh, this shrub honeysuckle uh, will show up on the creek bank and prevent new trees from growing, but they don't provide the same thing back to the river. Their their roots are really shallow, um, and they don't they don't create habitat. They don't really hold the bank together. So um, 
I talked about the land that we protected along scenic rivers um, and we're out there working on them trying to to deal with those invasive species. So that's one example. Um, invasive species really impact our nature preserves as well. We're trying to protect um, rare and endangered plants um, and in invasive species are, I'd say, our, our number one challenge um, in preserving those rare um, plants that don't grow in lots of places. Uh, the next question was, remember what the next question was, Alyssa? Yeah, um, and thanks Eugene for, I, I think I may have actually just shared the same thing, the Ohio Sea Grant Aquatic Invasive Species mm -hmm. Yes. In Ohio Guide. Um, so there's a link to that in the chat. And then also um, the second part of the question was what kind of opportunities are available for people who want to volunteer? So we'll, we'll talk more about this next week, um, but we do work with volunteers extensively to do that stream quality monitoring. So we're not training anybody right now, um, but as soon as things return to normal um, in terms of our ability to interact with the public, um, we hold we hold trainings where we teach people how to find those stream bugs and where to monitor for them, how to identify them, and then we have a quick um, ID guide that um, people use to identify what they found and they can generate a score. Uh, that we can track over time and it kind of throws up a red flag if the score suddenly drops we would know that there is a, a problem that we need to go address so um i think you can email um me and i think uh, uh my my co-worker uh can put my email address in the chat so you can find me so i'm heather.doherty at dnr.state, um, am I saying that right? DNR. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in the, in the chat. She, she's going to put it in there. It's a really long, it's a really long email address. Uh, you can also, um, you can also go to search for Ohio DNR online and search for Scenic Rivers. Um, there's some limited contact information there. We're getting ready to launch a new website that's going to have a lot more information. Um, so unfortunately, we can't sign people up right now, but if you contact us, we can um, get you on a list so we can get you involved in monitoring once we're back up and running um, with getting new volunteers in place. Uh, we also work with volunteers at events, um, managing our properties um, with invasive species. So volunteer um, volunteers are, are really important to our program. So please do get in touch with us. Okay, so another question came in. Okay. Um, are there any new scenic rivers being planned for designation? Um, so there are a, a couple that are being uh, investigated uh, by local communities. I know there's some um, interest in the Paint Creek right now. Um, and that one's probably um, the furthest along in terms of um, local community um, talking with each other about it. Um, there's a few others where there's um, interest and I don't know how far along they are right now, but yes, they're being explored. And let me say that I think there's a lot of rivers in Ohio that would uh, qualify to be state scenic in terms of um, the wide uh, array of wildlife that you would find there and the water quality and the uh, streamside forests but it really it really does start with community so i think there's plenty that are eligible but it it, it really depends on um, if the community it's something that is desired by the local community awesome okay you finally are off the hook heather okay <laughs> i don't mind <laughs> All right. Once again, thanks everybody for joining. We will hopefully see you next week. Have a good, uh, good rest of your week and weekend. All right. Thank you.